Hello everyone and welcome to today's interview in which I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Michael C. Anthony. Michael hey, has everybody. been... Sorry? I said hey everybody. Hi. <laughs> Michael has been a full-time uh, hypnotist for 25 years and he has traveled the world doing stage hypnosis and mentalism. Michael is a member of the famous touring group, The Illusionists, and he is also the founder of the Stage Hypnosis University, where he trains hypnotherapists and people from all walks of life on how to do amazing stage demonstrations. So, hello, Michael, and a huge hello. How hello. are you? I'm I'm good. It's lovely to have you join us today. Hey, I'm gr happy to be here. Good, and I know that you're just back from touring and are still in the process of catching up on things. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have you here. It's all good. I just just finished uh, 18 or 19 shows right in a row over a three week period. But that's the way I prefer to do things. I like to go out there, work like crazy, and then be home like crazy for a while, as opposed to out for a day, home for a day, out for a day, home for a day. So, uh, but I've been nonstop running around the world doing performances, yeah. hypnosis yeah. performances for almost 26 years now. Yeah, that's a lot of performances. It is. <laughs> so at the UK Hypnosis Convention this year, Michael will be hosting a full day workshop on Thursday, yep. which is called Hypnosis for Stage, Street and Profit. And yep. then on Friday morning, he's also giving a one hour presentation on how to build your hypnosis business with public performances. So lots in there, lots in there to uh, to be getting on with. Maybe you could begin by just telling us something about the workshop. Yeah, so absolutely. And, and if, you, if you see me wiping my brow like we were talking to earlier, it's because I'm just getting over being sick, but I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay yeah. for the interview. Uh, the two sessions, the one-day workshop, uh, is going to be fantastic and it's for anybody hypnotherapist or hypnosis newbie who wants to get out there and do hypnosis for a paying audience mm -hmm. that's why we call it hypnosis for stage for street or profit now the stage part uh, is where the money really comes in because a hypnotherapist or any any hypnosis enthusiast can make a lot more money than they think by performing hypnosis Okay. You know, and, and I'm not, I never ask anybody to leave what they're doing. Hypnotherapy, fantastic thing to do. Many of my students are hypnotherapists, but I find a lot of them say to themselves, you know what? I'd like to go out and have fun with hypnosis as well. Yeah, uh, there, there does seem to be an emphasis on the fun, the fun and the profit. Right. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. For sure. And we, we want to make sure that anybody who you know, finds themselves in a position where their, their therapy is going great, or maybe they want to expand on their hypnotherapy business. There's no better way to do that than getting out there and performing for an audience. Okay. Um, and what I'm talking about in the, in the one hour talk is how, basically how to scale your hypnotherapy business. So we've got the full day workshop, hypnosis for stage, street or profit. This is where we really get into how to build the show. Uh, the key components that you're going to need to do that, to make sure you get all the volunteers you can possibly imagine. Because at the end of the day, a stage hypnosis show becomes a numbers game. If you've only got three volunteers, you're going to be somewhat limited as to what you can do, as opposed yeah. to if you have 30 volunteers, yeah. right? Because yeah. if you've got 30 volunteers on your stage, you get to pick from the best and there's no telling what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we get into the different things you're going to need to know to make that show happen, how to actually build the show, how to create suggestibility tests that are built in an induction that are built for stage. Because as you can probably appreciate, a suggestibility test or an induction are far different for stage than how you would do it in a therapeutic office yeah. because nobody's watching. When you're doing it for therapy, you don't need to make it fun. You don't need to make it funny because you're not entertaining an audience. Mm. But, but when you're performing on stage, it's all about the fun. Of course, respect for your volunteers. That's number one, of course. Yeah. But you're going to make this very fun and there's a lot going on on stage. I tell hypnotherapists all the time, 
I say, look, here's the thing. People ask me, what's more difficult, stage work or therapy work? And it's kind of a cross. Some are easier for one reason or another, some are harder for another reason or another. For stage hypnosis, what's easier is you really only need to have one incredible induction that you know is going to work because when you've got, let's say, 25 or 30 volunteers on stage, you know you're going to be sending people back. So your induction for your group up there, uh, as long as you're getting 75% of them, you're golden. How does it work in a, in, a, in a therapy office? If your first method's not working, you better come up with the second. And then if that's not where you better come up with the third, right? Yeah. Um, but where stage hypnosis becomes a little more taxing is that you're calibrating 30 people at the same time. Okay. And this, this is something, this is a skill that you develop over time where, where you are saying, okay, I really like this person. That person's going to be okay. I really like this person. And you're making all these mental notes in your head while at the same time turning around and entertaining the audience. Yeah. Hey, this is a, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's really a dance on stage. I liken a stage hypnotist to a director, like a bro, a director of a Broadway play who's got 30 participants who have never seen the script. Mm. So that's your job as a stage hypnotist is to, okay, here we go. 30 people I've never met. Let's put on a performance. These people will never forget. So yeah. that's your job. A lot going on in the background, your brain's spinning at first, but then you soon get used to it like anything. Yeah. And you know, I read through the description of, of this workshop and there, there does seem to be a lot of you know emphasis on managing the audience which you know a lot of hypnotherapists just would have no idea where no, to begin you don't even have to you think know. of it yep yeah yep. so and there's different audiences for it depends who you're performing for are you performing for a <laughs> corporate audience or are you performing for you know college age high school age it all depends because you're going to attack your show differently uh depending on who you're in front of yeah yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's important, it's very important. Here's the mistake some stage hypnotists make. They get up on the stage and they hypnotize their group of people, almost ignoring everybody behind them. Yeah. And they lose, there's a disconnect, they lose rapport and they're not sure why things aren't rolling. So it's very important every once in a while to be talking to the audience, explain what's happening kind of in a stand up comedy kind of yeah. way. Um, so the audience is like, ah, oh, okay, I understand. And with the, with the hypnosis that we, that I, that I train with, that I teach with, I take an Ericksonian approach. And the reason is because Erickson, uh, was just so elegant in the way he did things. And here's what I want my, this is what I want my audience to be thinking. And I know it works as people tell me afterwards. I want them thinking, I don't know what he's doing, but I can sort of hear it. I can, I can hear when he changes this, when he, when he said, you know, they're hearing things like analog marks, they're hearing things like confusion statements, mind reading yeah. statements, tag questions, all these beautiful things that Erickson integrated into his therapy sessions yeah. that I use on the stage, but it makes the audience go, you know, that's because if you're just doing direct suggestion, yeah. And the people are thinking, well, he basically just told them what to do and they did it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's really interesting. I It hadn't occurred to me that you would use Ericksonian stuff on the stage. I assumed that it would all just be, you know, very direct. No, I, I don't like to take the direct approach for that reason. Okay. Um, it's going to work beautifully on the participants using the Ericksonian stuff. But the but primary reason I do, I mean, I can get it to work in a myriad of Ways. But the reason I like to go the Ericksonian route is for my audience, not for yeah. not so much for my volunteers. I want that whole something's happening. Yeah. I can Mystery. sense it. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's brilliant. And yeah. you know, there are hypnotherapists, I'm sure, who would, you know, really like to be able to take the the skill of you know, being a hypnotist on yep. the stage, but just would have no idea where to start with the logistics, you know, right. how, how to even begin with this kind of thing. Right. And that's why I like to make this. I've got many students that are hypnotherapists from around the world. Mm. And I, 
several of my hypnotherapists say, you know what, Michael, I'm now using the techniques I learned within Stage Hypnosis University in my therapy sessions, and yes. I'm getting way faster results. You know, yes. of course he's not yes. doing the jokes, and he's not doing the ha ha with the audience, but but the but the reaction creating trance with his participants is happening far faster because yeah. missing a lot of the fluff that is sometimes as hypnotherapists, we sometimes we can, we tend to get lost in our own words sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we take a fresh look at a different approach, it makes it say, huh, yes. maybe that's going to work even better or faster or get better results. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds great. Um, so a little bit then about the presentation on the Friday morning. Yeah, the so Friday, the, morning, the Friday morning presentation. How to build your hypnosis business with public performances. Yep. So will there be a little bit of crossover or? A tiny bit of crossover, but it's more about, okay, it's more about, okay, you've come in the room, you're already a hypnotherapist. I know this. Yep. And Let's talk about the whole, how are you going to uh, potentially step out of the, the model that you're currently in? You know, you're staying in the model partway, but take one foot out mm. and, and build that business by doing the performances. Because here's the benefit that, that a lot of people don't understand. When a hypnotherapist takes the time to create the show, uh, to build the show. Okay, first of all, they've got something they can sell over and over and over and over again. Mm. But once they've done that, and I've been dealing this for almost 26 years, every night after a show, people come up to me, Michael, can you help me with my weight? Can you help me with my phobia? Can you help me with my anxiety? And why are they doing that? Because they thought they were just coming in to be entertained. Mm. And most people have heard that, and I talk about it from the stage, believe me, uh, you know, most people think, well, you know, I, I've heard that hypnosis can help people stop smoking, et cetera, but I, I do touch on that on stage. But when you've proven your skill on stage, mm -hmm. you've proven that you can handle an audience, you can handle the volunteers, your work is already done. Yeah. Right? So the, you're doing your selling, you're, you're selling yourself. Yeah while you're having fun and then the yeah. people come up afterward, they say, help me, please, you know, help yeah. me with this, help me with this. And there's no faster way to scale a hypnotherapy yeah. business <laughs> than by it's doing like, it. It's like the greatest convincer, you it know, really is. people talk about doing convincers in the therapy room, doing a stage show was, you know, the ultimate convincer. Right. Yep. And, and everybody in the back of their mind, when they think hypnosis, they think one of two things. They think, A, cluck like a chicken, mm -hmm. or B, help me stop smoking, help me lose weight. They, they yep. think it's either going to be therapy or, or it's either going to be, you know, the, the antics on stage. And the reality is it can be both, and both can, can be a fantastic model for anybody to follow and either improve their business or create a whole other stream of income that they didn't think was possible. Yeah. Because I suppose whether it's being done on the stage or in the therapy room, it's ultimately about creating an experience, yep. you know, creating an experience for the person involved, whether right. that is, you know, a long-term experience or fucking like right. a show, as you say. And whether that experience be for your participants on stage or, or the people in the audience. Yeah. This, is my, this is my goal. I know that when I come out on stage, I know people in the audience some people are like, I've seen Michael before. This is going to be fun. Some people are like, I just came here because my friend wanted me to come. I don't know what to expect. Some people are a little bit fearful because they think I don't want to be hypnotized, right? Yeah. I, I'm not hypnotizing the whole audience, so they don't. And I and I, I address that quite quickly. But my goal is for everybody to walk out that room, an absolute believer in what they just saw. Yeah. You know, so okay. they're th they might walk in, they might walk in going, oh, what a bunch of nonsense this is going to be. And they walk out going, that was just converted. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've had so many people converted. come up to me. It, it, it's so funny because hypnosis is such a, it's a persuasion game in so many ways. I've had so many people come up to me um, before my show and they say, I would never volunteer for this. 
this. I'm like, oh, that's all yeah. right. You don't have to. There'll be plenty of volunteers. But then I get out there. I build the rapport. I'm doing the comedy, all that stuff. And I make hypnosis sound so exciting. You don't want to miss yeah. this opportunity. Who's on stage? The person who 10 minutes earlier said, I would never do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, the, the rapport is crucial, isn't it? Because, yep. you know, we when we're building rapport in a therapy room, it's one-on-one. -on -one but totally yep. different dynamic when you're doing it with yep. you know, that amount of people in the audience. And, and, that's why, and that's why we also talk about in the hypnosis for stage treat and profit. Uh, we also talk about mentalism. If you know what mentalism is, mm. it, it looks like real mind reading. For example, I'll come out on yep. stage. Some I'll tell somebody, think of a number from one to a hundred and I'll tell the person what number they're thinking of. Mm -hmm. Or they open up a book, look at any word. I tell them what word they're thinking of. So many different things. And, that also acts as an incredible hypnotic convincer. Yes. So the volunteers are watching and they're thinking, huh, yes. if he can do that, he can, or he or she can do that, he can probably hypnotize me too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So everything is building, building, building. Even though it's called stage hypnosis, mm -hmm. I tell my students all the time, uh, the word stage comes before hypnosis. You need to understand the elements of the stage. Primarily the three things are rapport, having rapport with the volunteers and the audience, confidence, building the confidence. If you don't have any, I help you build it. And then creativity. Mm. You put those three things together with hypnosis, you've got magic. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you know, I think that whole performance side of things is something Lots of hypnotherapists and even hypnotists just don't really feel very comfortable with, right. very confident about. You yep. know, even if it's unsaid, it's it's that thing that kind of you know eats away at a lot of hypnotherapists. So I think right. you know the more confidence that can be developed in that area, the better. Right. Know? I tell you this: when it happens, when hypnotherapy is a student of mine, and we're working together, putting to get that show put together. There might be a little bit of nerves going in. And when they contact me, you know, an hour after that first show, they go, Michael, I can't believe what just happened. My world just opened up. Yeah. Because now they realize they can do something that just a few months previously they thought was completely impossible. And so things open up, opportunities are open up, uh, streams of income have opened up. And it's just a fun way yes. to make a living. It really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the subtitle of um, of uh, your workshop. Get paid ridiculous amounts of money for having fun with hypnosis. <laughs> there is ridiculous amounts of money, especially in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked every market you can imagine in this over the last 26 years. I focus on corporate. Uh, okay. There's cruise ships, there's high schools, there's colleges, there's fairs, there's festivals, uh, there's comedy clubs, different mm. private events. Your average person would have no idea how often hypnosis is happening near them someplace. But the, mm. there's so much going on, there's so much opportunity out there. It's really quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds great. The workshop and, and the presentation both just, you know, sound brilliant. So Yeah, if, any, or, if anybody out there hasn't registered yet or if they're thinking about it, if you're on the fence, make it. sure you're there. Do it. Uh, we're going to have a, <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a direct do suggestion. It. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, on the, the Thursday is the is the full day workshop. Yes. Uh, hypnosis for Stage Street or Profit, and on the Friday morning is how to scale your business with hypnosis demonstrations and shows. So I'm excited. This is my third time back at the UK yep. Hypnosis Convention, and uh, we had a blast last year and the year yep. before. And here we go again. I bought my tickets today. Good stuff. My, Good my stuff. flight, I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's one of my highlights. Good. I'll, so, I'll look forward to seeing you there. Yes, yes. And for anyone who would like to come along to Michael's workshop or to his lecture and is still to get a ticket, you can visit the website at ukhypnosisconvention.co.uk and find out everything you need to know. I think the workshop is slash workshops, I think. Yes, I, I think you're right. I <laughs> yeah. think you're right. Um, and so, you know, all that remains for me to say, Michael, is thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us, especially when you're not feeling 
I, hey, no worries. I appreciate it. No and, worries. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. And you, the, the workshop and the presentation just both, you know, sound entertaining and educational, both. Yeah, they are. We, we, we have fun and there's incredible life-changing takeaways in both of them. So, yeah. uh, so it, it's going to be a great time and I'm looking forward to coming out to the UK. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much. And we will see you in November. All right. Thank you. See you thank soon. Thank you very much, Michael. Bye-bye. All right. Take care.